Hello friends, in my last video, I had shown you the basics of fluoroscopy around calcinium, how different fluoroscopic views look and what is the mechanism of those views. In this video, I will be showing you the basic technique in which you can easily get the required fluoroscopic views for calcinium during the operative procedures. You need not to change your C-arm position again and again, change the limb position again and again because often we find the residents struggling for getting a good view, especially the axial view. So in this technique, I'll show you how to get the fluoroscopic views with ease. So conventionally we use the lateral position for operating the calcaneum fractures and this is the kind of position we get after putting the limp on the operating table. So if we see the ankle from above, so this will be the radiograph we'll be getting. So this kind of picture we will be getting. So definitely for getting this kind of view, we want the C-arm console directly above the ankle to get this kind of. What about the axial view? We find the residents struggling for getting axial view. What they do? They try to internally rotate the limb, lift it and then try to dorsal the ankle so that the calcium axial view can be performed and the c-arm console is placed in an oblique direction to get the axial view but it is very difficult why because often our hand or the toes block the view second problem is that for getting a good view we need ankle dorsiflexion and it is very difficult to get the ankle dorsiflexed in this uneasy position even the assistant who is holding the limb in internal rotation is finding it very difficult to keep the limb static in that particular position so definitely it is going to be stressful and you'll be struggling to get the good axial view you see the beam is passing like this to get a good axial view the beam has to be parallel to this facet and it is very difficult to keep the limb position static to keep facet and the beam aligned so a good axial view should look like this and this is possible only when the beam is passing in line with the posterior facet and it is very difficult in this particular position because everything depends upon this assistant who is holding the limb in this particular rotation and the amount of dorsiflexion you are going to perform while avoiding interference in this zone if your hand comes in this zone you are going to block the axial view so by now we are aware that we need two views the lateral view which is easy by putting the c arm directly above the ankle and the axial view would be an anteroposterior view in which the beam passes parallel to the posterior facet so this will be the direction of the axial view and this will be the direction of your lateral view in lateral view you will be able to address the angular parameters and the pitch of the calcaneum while in axial view you will be able to perfectly visualize the posterior facet and any varus or valgus angulation or any varus or valgus angulation so in this technique what we do we just position our arm at an oblique direction to the operating table and ensure that the foot end of the table should be free. You need to select the operating table in which the foot end is free so that the opposite part of the arm console is coming on the free end of the table without getting blocked by the operating table stand. By, so by that you will be able to get a good axial view because by aligning the arm obliquely to the table you are actually making the beam parallel to the posterior facet and see how easy it will be to make the ankle dorsal flex. You can simply dorsal flex the ankle without blocking the beam which is passing through the posterior facet and no assistant will be required to lift the leg in an abnormal internally rotated position that is going to hinder your axial view. I'll show you in the coming example and for the lateral view you want the c-arm console directly above the ankle. So even if you are putting the c-arm obliquely to the table that should not hinder your lateral view because for that you want your console directly above the ankle and that will be possible even if the c-arm is placed in an oblique direction to the operating table. So now you see in this video we have placed the c-arm console at an angle to the table. We are getting a good lateral view without any difficulty and you see the positioning of the c arm it is clear of any hindrance on the foot end of the table now we'll be getting the axial view you, now you see we have rotated the c arm console as we normally go for the lateral views so the beam is now passing in line with the posterior facet so we should get a good axial view you see the foot end of the table is free and there is no hindrance to the c arm console the beam is passing in this direction which is actually representing the posterior facet and therefore there is no hindrance in the axial view for the calcaneum. The assistant is dorsiflexing the ankle and you see the area of beam is here and it is not being hindered by any object or the surgeon and it toes which usually block the axial view and see we are getting a perfect axial view without being hindered by the toes we are able to see the posterior facet and we are able to see the sustentrum telli as well it is going to guide our reduction whether it is going in valgus or varus some of the viewers have asked for the clinical videos or photos for the fluoroscopy of calcaneum i hope this video will be helpful for them and definitely this technique of fluoroscopy is going to be helpful for you all in getting good views whenever you are operating calcaneum fractures thank you